Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Alberto Asque, and uh, I can see some uh, participants to, to the session. So just uh, before we start, uh, if I may get uh, assurance that you can hear me uh, clearly, I can see participants, uh, George, Maria, and uh, Jay, and uh, uh, well, Richard, thank you for joining us. And uh, I believe, uh, shall we start, uh, Imogen? Yes, sure, if everyone can hear. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, so welcome to this presentation of postgraduate programs of the School of Finance and Management of SOAS uh, University of London. As I said, my name is uh, Alberto Asquera. I'm a senior lecturer in public policy and management, and uh, I teach and convene an MSc program within the department, I specifically referred to on-campus uh, program because uh, uh, the department also has uh, a range of uh, distance learning uh, programs as well. Uh, just as a way to start, if you like, especially as uh, we are just a few of us, uh, uh, may I just ask uh, um, why are you here? If there is any particular uh, program of your interest uh, you had a look at, uh, or you just have a general interest towards, uh, towards the SOAS. And I'm very happy if you want to, to either switch on your microphone or as you know, if you're familiar with Zoom, there is a chat that you can use where to type uh, about your, your interest. So feel free, uh, Maria, George, uh, Jay, what is it, just a Jay there on the screen, or oh, Jennifer, thank you. <laughs> about, all right, uh, public policy, finance uh, and management, great. From your side, uh, George, Maria, Just wait uh, for a few seconds in case you'd like to, to type anything. Okay, I uh, public uh, policy, uh, finance and management. Oh, great. Uh, thank you, thank you uh, George. Uh, and uh, thank you, Maria, for the note. International business. Okay, so I will uh, deserve uh, a bit of time uh, to focus on these uh, programs uh, uh, as well. And uh, Richard A, I don't have any further hint, but I guess, uh, is, it, is it you, Richard, Alexander, my colleague? Or are you a participant uh, with, a, with a similar name? Well, okay. okay, not quite sure. Uh, can, can hear, but I will just uh, proceed. So this is a presentation intended to illustrate uh, the postgraduate programs of the department, the School of Finance and Management, which is part, uh, part of SOAS. So a nice way to start, uh, possibly, is the one to introduce you a bit about SOAS and don't know whether you are based in the UK, in London at the moment, or from uh, uh, overseas or any other city in the UK. But in the extent to which you may be familiar with London, you may know SOAS uh, is a, a, a presentation mode uh, Imogen, I'm happy to do that, uh, Imogen, I'm just afraid if I lose uh, part of the other windows uh, uh, with the presenters and the chat, but let's see, does okay, it work okay. better? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, great, Thank thanks. Much. Just need one second to rearrange a bit uh, my windows so I do not lose uh, the site uh, onto the chat. So, uh, SOAS uh, is uh, located at the very heart uh, of, of London, so it's in Bloomsbury, with a number of other universities around and a very lively intellectual life. Uh, we are part of the uh, University of London, and there on the slide, uh, you can see Senate House, the base of University of London, that, that kind of uh, quite uh, in, impressing, uh, dominating uh, building uh, uh, on uh, one side, the west side of, uh, of uh, Russell Square. And uh, uh, SOAS specifically is located on the right of that building, uh, as you see it from the picture. Uh, just to orient yourself, uh, on the left uh, of, the, of that building, that would be the British Museum. So we are quite uh, uh, nicely located in the center, center of London. And uh, the School of Finance and Management is part uh, of SOAS uh, University of London. As the name says, uh, we are focused on uh, finance management in both the private sector and the public, uh, the public sector. 
uh, the department is uh, uh, quite well uh, recognized and reputed uh, both within the UK and, uh, and internationally. It's a relatively small uh, department as typically also SOAS is a relatively small university, could be like uh, 3000 students uh, on campus uh, and almost the same in distance learning mode. And uh, that results uh, in quite a number of uh, advantageous features, uh, like for instance, relatively small uh, classes, especially in postgraduate studies, uh, which offer a very nice opportunity to get to know each other just in a couple of weeks time, and especially to have a frequent uh, interaction between students uh, and between students uh, and uh, the academics. This results uh, in a number of uh, uh, features like uh, uh, immediate fast communication, intensive uh, feedback to, to students, uh, and uh, therefore typically quite uh, a way to, to help uh, students uh, to uh, speed up their learning uh, and also to network uh, uh, with other colleagues and with, uh, with academics. So this is, uh, I try to narrate uh, the spirit of how is it in the department, uh, and then you can also see at some figures, uh, some metrics which try to convey the extent to which this results uh, in a good uh, satisfaction from the side of our, our students. Uh, there are also testimonials, and uh, we share this one on the slide. And uh, this uh, quote uh, from a former student is especially, I believe, intended to convey the truly international uh, spirit of SOAS generally. And so uh, our classes uh, are really quite composite uh, with uh, students coming from every corner of the world. Rarely we may have uh, more than one or two students uh, coming from the same, uh, from the same country. And uh, I'd, I'd say there is uh, quite a number of students coming from the typical regions of interest of SOAS, so, so that is uh, Asia, East Asia, South Asia, the Middle East, and Africa, both uh, Maghreb countries and Sub-Saharan Africa. But on the other hand, uh, we also typically have students from the UK, continental Europe, from, uh, from Americas, and, and so on. But on the top of what uh, is the class uh, composition, it is mostly the SOAS environment, which is uh, quite uh, uh, captivating a number of uh, activities like uh, uh, seminars, uh, student societies, uh, they offer the opportunity to relate uh, to many interests in, in uh, all over the social science. So uh, SOAS is especially strong on some disciplines like uh, uh, finance management, uh, public policy, but there also you find uh, humanities like uh, literature, music, uh, and, uh, and so on. So just to share an example, a couple of years ago, I had a student um, originally from Somalia, but part of the Somali diaspora and taking the MSc in public policy, finance and management, but nevertheless realizing at SOAS uh, there were also interesting modules like about, uh, for instance, uh, Somali literature. And uh, he was quite interested to go and audit at least these modules uh, as a way to learn more about uh, his uh, uh, original, original uh, uh, culture and, uh, and history. So this is just as a way to convey the richness of the intellectual environment that you can find, uh, you can find at SOAS. Of course, uh, undertaking a postgraduate uh, uh, study is also primarily intended to cultivate uh, career prospects. And uh, our students, uh, uh, we track what they do after their degree and they end up uh, working uh, in quite a number of different uh, uh, entities. So in the banking finance sector, in uh, multinational companies, uh, in, uh, in government, uh, in consulting, uh, NGOs, uh, third sector. Uh, we, we have uh, alumni from uh, our, uh, of our students uh, working uh, in some among the main um, well-known, uh, internationally well-known uh, uh, companies in the world or, or in governments. Uh, talking specifically about the MSc Public Policy, Finance and Management, which is the one I convene and just a bit more familiar with. For example, some, since a year ago, I established a LinkedIn group between students who then become uh, alumni. And so therefore it's possible to, uh, to see which are their destinations. And uh, some of them uh, work in government, either in the UK or in the government of the country where they are from. Others, they are in uh, uh, consulting, uh, like Price uh, Waterhouse uh, Cooper. Uh, others uh, went into charities, uh, and and so on and so on. So we we know there is a quite a, quite a good uh, placement of our students uh, after they complete uh, their their degree. Part of it is also 
thanks to the effort of a career service within SOAS, they provide uh, some ways to help uh, students build up their skills, uh, cultivate and present uh, their, their CV, access to databases of uh, in opportunities for uh, internships uh, and uh, uh, jobs, and therefore they have uh, these venues also to help them uh, search for opportunities and to send uh, um, uh, convincing, uh, convincing uh, CVs. So generally, one, a few final remarks uh, concerning the feature of what we do. Uh, this slide is intended to help uh, highlight uh, we are primarily a research-led uh, university. So it means uh, what academics do is uh, primarily we, uh, we, we do research. We aim to publish uh, in top journals uh, in our respective uh, uh, fields, uh, fields of interest. And that's a... Uh, uh, typically stimulating also for, uh, for teaching uh, because we try to convey to our students the state of the art uh, in, uh, in the fields uh, of our interest, uh, possibly in some specialized areas of our, of our research. So just uh, to mention an example, within public policy and management, uh, personally, I have an interest towards uh, regulation and governance. Originally, I especially studied uh, the area of infrastructure, like uh, water transport. Uh, more recently, I became more interested uh, in the area of uh, regulation and governance of emerging technologies, you know, like the blockchain and cryptocurrencies or nanomaterials. Uh, but quite recently, actually, I specifically published uh, in the area of regulation of genome editing uh, uh, techniques uh, and the opportunities they open up, uh, you know, to provide uh, improved medicine or to tweak and improve productivity of crops in a agriculture. And so this area of studies uh, resulted in quite a number of uh, papers, case studies that we also feed into what we teach in order to help uh, students uh, zoom into what is at their very forefront of uh, scientific uh, uh, development and also of scholarship. And uh, as I said earlier, this also results uh, in a very uh, tailored, uh, I'd say, uh, style, uh, style of education because of the uh, limited students we have uh, in class, uh, we help uh, students cultivate their, their interest. This may take shape in different ways. Uh, students are invited to make uh, presentations on a variety of uh, cases, uh, cases to discuss uh, in, uh, in the modules. But also students uh, are required uh, in the MSc to do a dissertation, which is an important component uh, of the learning trajectory. In a dissertation, students can zoom onto a particular area of interest, uh, from uh, poverty reduction to green finance, uh, for example, together with the development of skills uh, to uh, collect the data, to analyze data in a, a high research quality standard, uh, and then especially to write uh, in an uh, academic style, which is uh, quite helpful if uh, in any case a student would like to undertake uh, a career in uh, academia, but also for any sort of research or policy report they may write right in the future. And so there is this component part of developing a number of skills of data collection, analysis, and writing reporting skills, which are cultivated within our, our MSc uh, programs. Just a few more words, uh, and then I'm very happy to receive uh, questions from your side. And actually, if you like, uh, as I zoom into specific programs, which may be of your interest, uh, just please feel free to either raise up your hand, switch on your microphone, or to type a question there in the chat. I'm very happy to take it along the way, uh, apart from questions uh, at the very end. So at the present, uh, uh, we have uh, four postgraduate programs in the department, plus also the, the PhD program. Uh, I can say something about that uh, uh, later on. And so you see, we have uh, accounting and finance, international financial management, international business and public policy, finance and management. I may spend a few more words concerning the last two of them as I got from your, for, from your inputs. So this can be especially interesting uh, for you. But uh, as uh, we are also recording this presentation, I spend a few words uh, also uh, on uh, the other programs. So starting from the MSc Accounting and Finance. So as the name says, uh, this is a program uh, concerning developing uh, uh, relatively advanced uh, postgraduate level uh, knowledge, uh, skills and capabilities concerning uh, accounting and finance. A few words uh, here concerning the structure of the uh, of the program. So uh, all MSc programs are designed in the same way, in the sense uh, students uh, take eight taught modules uh, plus the dissertation. 
um, the workload of studies counted in uh, credits, academic credits, and the MSc totals 180 uh, academic credits, uh, postgraduate credits. And uh, as you see, part of what students do is the dissertation, which counts for 60 credits. So basically about one third of the workload of study of students uh, is actually taken by the dissertation. So the dissertation starts uh, roughly at about this time of the year, when, when students have been taken mm -hmm. a number of classes in the first term, which is in between October to December, they may start to think about what they would be really interested to focus on uh, to write a dissertation. And uh, typically by December, they also draft uh, a very tentative uh, indication of the topics or a research idea they have in mind, just one page which they pass to department. And then department matches the interest of the student with the expertise of a specific academics. So academics, a specific academic plays the role of the supervisor for the student in their dissertation. In term two, in all MSc programs, uh, students take uh, the research methods in management module that you can find there on the slide uh, among the compulsory modules. The research methods in management is precisely intended to provide the students uh, all the knowledge, skills, capabilities they need in order to design and carry out uh, a research. So starting from uh, issues around epistemology and then uh, around the design of a research could be case-oriented or variable uh, uh, oriented design, techniques uh, for data collection from uh, quantitative methods, uh, use of data sets, uh, surveys, interviews, focus, group, focus groups, and so on, and then techniques uh, for data analysis, quantitative data analysis uh, like uh, uh, regressions, uh, uh, structural equation modeling. Uh, nowadays, there is a growing interest uh, towards uh, machine learning uh, for many purposes, uh, or more tools of uh, qualitative interpretive uh, uh, analysis. So by the end of term two, by taking the research methods in management, uh, the student will have uh, all the intellectual equipment they need in order to, to start uh, doing a data collection analysis and then writing up uh, the dissertation. Dissertation is to be submitted by the beginning of September. And so therefore, uh, typically students uh, spend in between May to August uh, as the period where they are really focused on, uh, on the dissertation. The, the, the scheme of carrying out the dissertation is pretty much similar across uh, all the MSc programs, but then every MSc program is quite specific in the, in the modules the students take. So you see in MSc Accounting and Finance, students take professional integrity for the accountancy and finance practitioner, financial statement analysis, managerial accounting, international corporate finance, financial modeling techniques, uh, plus uh, one more module, to reach the total of eight modules, a student can choose among the elective or optional modules. And I just refer your attention to the website information on the website where you can find the detailed list of the optional or, or elective modules. Okay, as you can see, modules are allocated, some of them in turn one, others in term two. And so term one in between October, December, roughly, term two in between January to March, roughly. And uh, typically students tend to, you know, spread out the workload. So they may take typically four uh, taught modules in term one and four modules uh, in, uh, in term two. Okay. Uh, well, if you have a question, just please feel free to to ask or to drop there in the chat, because otherwise I just move on and I describe the structure and the aims of the other MSc programs as well. Just the final words concerning MSc Accounting and Finance. I also highlight the, the program is accredited by the Chartered Institute of Management Accountants. So it means part of the modules you take for this MSc also count as credits for their qualifications. So in case any student is interested also to gain a professional qualification, they may have already taken some, more, some credits which count for that particular, particular aim. So you see you get 11 exemptions from taking modules and exams for sign professional accreditation. Next uh, is the MSc in uh, International Financial Management. As the name says uh, here, the focus uh, is on uh, finance uh, at the international or, or global uh, perspective. 
Uh, students take a dissertation on international financial management, so the feature of the design of the dissertation are pretty much the same. I would, I would add, if you like, uh, typically from our side of academics do not really require students to do a dissertation on any particular topic. Uh, dissertation is really intended to help students uh, cultivate their interest, so you must really like what you do a dissertation on. This may relate to your previous uh, work or study experience, to your present occupation, to your prospective career, because you know even the title of the dissertation on the CV can signal something about your, your interests and therefore you may select strategically what to study in the dissertation, what to do research on in, for your career prospects. On the top of the dissertation in international financial management, uh, as you see, there are a number of compulsory modules to take here. So risk management, again, research method in management, as I said earlier, this provides all the skills needed to do the dissertation. Financial statement analysis for investors, emerging market finance, international corporate finance and uh, financial modeling uh, uh, techniques. Next comes the MSE in uh, international business. And again, as the name says, uh, here we switch attention from accounting and finance uh, towards management and especially managing uh, for running businesses in international perspective. The MSC, I would say, is especially focused uh, not just uh, uh, with the issues uh, concerning how to manage uh, uh, multinational uh, companies, how to manage uh, uh, entities which operate across uh, different uh, uh, countries, but especially how to be able to um, to change perspective, to acquire understanding of the specificity of different markets. So a number of entities nowadays can carry out the business in many parts of the world, could be in industrialized countries, in parts of Asia, parts of Africa, and, and so on. And uh, it's quite plain that uh, locally there can be uh, specific, specific features of institutions, uh, of culture, of tradition, and so on and so on. And so quite a lot of sensitivity is uh, required uh, in order to be able to uh, understand business practice and to communicate uh, effectively. And it is in this spirit uh, that, as you can see, this uh, MSc includes modules like uh, international management, international marketing, uh, international business strategy, and then uh, the very features of multinationals uh, and global, global business, and among the compulsory modules, uh, international human resource management. On the top of these, uh, as it is a design feature shared across all MSc programs, uh, there are here as well uh, research methods in management and also doing a dissertation specifically in international business. Okay, here we count uh, uh, five plus two, seven modules. Uh, students will choose uh, one more module out of a list of elective or optional modules uh, in order to, uh, to uh, actually two more modules because here there is a dissertation in order to total a number of eight top modules uh, plus the dissertation. The final MSc program is the one which I convene, it's public policy, finance and management. As the name says uh, here, the focus is uh, on the public sector broadly. So how are policies made uh, in government? Uh, how they are managed and uh, how they are implemented, executed, uh, how public sector entities are managed and how all of this is funded. So apart from research methods in management and uh, dissertation in public policy, finance and management, here students uh, take modules like uh, a public policy, perspective issues and strategy, public governance, accountability and transparency, innovation and organizational change, and then a focus on finance, emerging market finance and financial modeling techniques. But on the top of these, uh, students uh, can also take uh, two more uh, elective uh, modules, uh, like uh, fiscal governance, uh, for instance, budgeting and performance, uh, or even other modules taken from other departments. So you may have a look at uh, development studies, uh, for instance, or other departments across SOAS, uh, if there are any other modules uh, which are taught there and which can be of your of your interest and uh, well this is uh, the uh, coverage of the of the four postgraduate programs we teach in the department i think i can pause for a few seconds uh, just to ask if uh, there is uh, there is any question
So I just ask if uh, Maria, Jennifer, George, if you have any questions, just feel free uh, to ask. So hello, uh, Shubankar, if I pronounce correctly, thank you for the line in the chat. So you did your bachelor's in the commerce field where I had the finance and economic subject, but no public policy. Am I eligible to apply? And yes, you are. So um, um, applicants uh, typically, they have uh, a background, an uh, educational background uh, in social science. Uh, but broadly understood. So they may have a background in finance, in accounting, in economics, in marketing, or in government and public administration. But by and large, any social science background is fine in order to take the MSc program. I would say it's, a, uh, if you like, an issue which is pretty much on the shoulders of us as academics. We are pretty much aware of the variety, the diversity of students we have in class starting from day one, not just in terms of educational background, but also countries, regions in the world they come from. And it is our task actually to help students individually to get on board in just a, in a couple of weeks time and to feel they have, they are equipped, they can understand what we explain and therefore to acquire familiarity in the fields. So I believe uh, uh, Shubankar, no worries about, about this. So certainly your application will be considered and uh, uh, we will do our best to help you uh, get up to speed in, uh, in a new field or area, even if uh, that's relatively new to you. Uh, I may also say that, for instance, the, the area of public policy, finance and management is pretty much eclectic. So typically you may receive applications also from uh, applicants without a social science degree, degree like uh, medical doctors or engineers, but possibly they may have had uh, quite a number of years experience uh, uh, out of working in the public sector. And therefore they may just uh, search for such an MSc, for instance, for a career step change. And uh, typically we appraise uh, applications as a whole. We look at the background of the applicant, their work experience. Uh, we look at their personal statement. That's quite important uh, to help us appreciate uh, where you come from, uh, why you believe the M this MSc program can be helpful for you. And uh, if we share the understanding that this can be helpful for your career trajectory, you may get, uh, you may get an offer. And uh, every year I get in class uh, students uh, without the social science background. And uh, typically they can be quite smart. Uh, I remember a biologist uh, from Nigeria. This year I have a medical doctor from Yemen, for instance. Uh, and uh, they may need some time to acquire, you know, the conceptual structure, the lexicon, the terms we use in public policy. But they, then they can also relate what we study, what we research to their past work experience, uh, for instance. Okay. So thank you for the question. Just a, uh, just a type uh, if you have uh, any, any further question. Okay. I'm, I'm, many of you, you must have a, a possibility to interact with the materials because I can see some funny lines that someone must be drawing on the, on the slides, but no worry about it. Just take it as a playground for, for taking notes. <laughs> so thanks. If you have any questions, of course, just to proceed and type anything in the chat or just raise up your hand because otherwise I can just proceed with the presentation and share with you a few more, a few more ideas if they help to fulfill a part of your curiosity towards, the, towards this presentation. So entry requirements, typically we require first a good second class honors bachelor degree, but in a wide range of disciplines as, as I explained. If your degree com comes from another country, we, we have some way to, to, to understand whether it is equipped equivalent to a high two two uh, UK bachelor bachelor's degree. Uh, some relevant work, work experience is welcome. It's not a, an absolute requirement, however. So we also have students coming straight from undergraduate studies, for instance, and they just uh, proceed with a postgraduate uh, degree. 
it is required to demonstrate proficiency in English. So it depends. You could have already studied in the past in a UK in an England English speaking university, for instance. Otherwise, we expect you to submit a test which provides evidence of your knowledge of English. Just refer to the website about the details about which tests are acceptable and the score which is expected expected there. Just if you like a few words concerning also the postgraduate research program that we have at SOAS, so the PhD program. Uh, if you are interested to carry out uh, research and so to fully develop your skill, skills to become a social science researcher in the future, you may consider at present or typically after a postgraduate study, after an MSc uh, program, to apply for a PhD. It's a, a three-year research uh, program which may typically extend even to a fourth, a fourth here. In the first year, students, uh, they uh, strengthen their research skills further. So they take uh, uh, research method modules, uh, they take part uh, to PhD seminars, uh, they interact frequently with their appointed uh, PhD uh, supervisor as a way to help them uh, design a uh, research. The main point here, a PhD piece of research must provide an original contribution to, to scholarship. So so it means at the very end, the PhD thesis and all the byproducts of the thesis, like for instance, two, three, four research papers, they will be up to the standards for publication in academic journals. So it means they are really, truly a contribution to advance the forefront of knowledge in a particular, particular area. By the end of year one, students typically produce a literature review chapter, which helps indicate what is the literature gap, what is their intended contribution in a particular field. Here, two typically is devoted to data collection fieldwork. So students may travel around, actually, if, for instance, they need to collect the first-hand data, like interviews in particular countries. And then here, three is typically devoted to writing up writing up the, 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 the thesis, which comes in the shape of about 80,000 words. So quite a, quite a monograph, if you like, quite a piece of work, which is then examined by external examiners and defended in an oral, oral viva. Okay, so if you have any questions also concerning the research program, just feel free to type in the chat to just switch on your microphone or feel free to contact me or any other colleague in the department, depending on the area of your, of your interest. A few more uh, slides to touch upon a few other parts uh, possibly of your concerns. So one is about funding uh, of these uh, programs. Uh, some students, they may have a private uh, personal family sources of funding. Others, they may be supported uh, by various uh, scholarship uh, schemes. And uh, um, there are uh, there is a page, a web page uh, within a SOAS website. Uh, you can easily Google it, which is uh, uh, mapping out uh, all the various uh, scholarship schemes which are available and the corresponding links and deadlines. So I may just invite you to consult, uh, search and consult these uh, web pages, uh, especially because uh, a number of calls uh, typically are, are open at about this time of the year and the deadlines could be in a, um, just months into the future and therefore it could be the time to prepare and send out applications every scholarship schemes they may have certain requisites so they may especially addressing students from a particular country of origin or particular background or particular areas of studies so it really depends i invite you to do a bit of a search they are concerning whether there are scholarship schemes to which you are eligible okay and of course there are there are also PhD scholarships uh, uh, which, are, which are available. If you need uh, some uh, consulting also, you find there on the slide, the website of my colleagues uh, in the scholarships team, uh, if you need any, any advice or, 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 or explanations. Okay. So that's, uh, that's about uh, all, uh, all that I aim to, to say possibly. Uh, just uh, as you see here in the slide, uh, there is a mention to the difficult time of the COVID-19. Uh, COVID so a couple of 
years, academic years, uh, back in time in the very middle of the year, we uh, quickly adjusted the way in which we delivered uh, our teaching by making use of uh, online uh, platforms. And the uh, scenario persisted last year when uh, we delivered uh, our teaching fully, fully online. At present, uh, we are in a hybrid mode. So currently this term, uh, I teach uh, uh, modules in the MSc and the lectures uh, are done uh, online, but uh, tutorial classes uh, are done in person. And the main reason of the policy is that uh, lectures uh, could gather a number of uh, individuals in the same classroom up to the number of 100 possibly for undergrad students. And so it's uh, safer to keep uh, uh, social distancing and doing it online. But the tutorial classes are typically done in smaller groups, so up to say 15, 15 individuals. And because of the size of the rooms, uh, precautions and like keeping uh, windows open and the whole and the, uh, keeping masks, they Mm, they felt uh, felt as a uh, safe to to carry out uh, a face to face uh, in interaction, which of course uh, adds uh, to the experience uh, of students and the uh, um, immediacy of communication. On the top of this. Uh, large part of uh, on-campus life uh, resumed and so therefore we also have uh, office hours that nowadays we can hold uh, equally well either in person but sometimes uh, we have discovered uh, for everyone possibly sometimes also for the same students it's just convenient uh, to have a quick chat uh, online and so therefore we have become uh, quite flexible I believe in this respect by using uh, a number of uh, media to, to interact with, uh, with each other. Okay, um, it's, the future is quite uh, uncertain, of course. So um, in the next term, uh, we will persist uh, with the, this hybrid format. Uh, if you ask me, frankly, I do not really know how a uh, scenario will be in uh, October 2022 in the next, uh, next uh, academic, uh, academic year. Okay, uh, so possibly, uh, I believe uh, uh, I, told everything uh, which was suggested by the slides uh, for the presentation, but I'm very open to, to questions. Uh, if uh, you believe there could have been something I forgot to mention, if there is uh, any, anything specific you'd like to know about the design of the programs, uh, the way in which they work, uh, what to expect uh, if you become a source a student uh, and, uh, and so on and so on. So thank, thank you, Zoe, for, for this question. So uh, you may have joined later. Have you spoken about the part-time distance learning programs yet uh, and specifically interested in public policy and management MSc? Thank you for the question, Zoe. Just a few words concerning first the distance learning programs and then the part-time feature. So first, uh, generally about the part-time feature, that's open also for on-campus programs. So if you want to be an on-campus student, you can take the MSc full-time in one year time or because of whatever reason for job commitments, family commitments, you may also take it in part-time mode, which is taken over two years time. So it means the workload during term time is basically half. So basically in every term, students in part-time mode on campus take two modules per term, two taught modules per term rather than four. I have uh, every year, I have typically one or two students in class who take the on-campus MSc in part-time mode. On the top of these, uh, the School of Finance and Management uh, offers, uh, uh, I believe, uh, eight uh, distance learning uh, MSc uh, programs, uh, and uh, especially they are delivered by means of a dedicated the unit uh, which is called uh, CEFIMS, the Center for Financial and Management, uh, Management Studies. Uh, so I just refer you to the website of uh, CEFIMS, which is CEFIMS, okay, if you want to know more uh, about uh, uh, about these, uh, sorry, I have an issue with the, the, the cursor on the screen. Help me, help me uh, share the, the, the details of the, of the link. And uh, sorry, also the sharing screen disappeared. And uh, so concerning these uh, MSc, MSc distance learning programs, so they are designed uh, in a different way, but the on-campus ones. So talking specifically about the MSc public policy and management, the design of this program is to take six modules 
and uh, this can be all of them uh, taught modules uh, or students have the option to take uh, four taught modules plus the research method module plus the dissertation. So the first difference uh, in between the distance learning, uh, distance learning MSc program and the on-campus program is that uh, in the distance learning uh, mo uh, program, first uh, the modules are uh, six uh, and not uh, eight plus the dissertation. Second feature is that uh, the dissertation is optional. So in distance learning mode, uh, you may take, uh, you may complete the, uh, uh, the dissertation, you may complete the MSc by either taking six taught modules and that's it, or if you like uh, to take the dissertation instead of one of these uh, taught, uh, taught modules. The programs are designed to be part-time by default. What I mean is that in distance learning mode, the MSc by design can't be taken in just one year time. The main reason is that distance learning programs, we know they are designed to meet the need of students who may be typically working. I believe like 99% of our distance learning students, students, they do work at the same time. They, and they find it convenient to take the MSc in distance learning precisely because of this reason. Not just because they're busy, but also because they are not in the UK. And typically a number of them, they may even expect to travel over the course of the MSc, depending on the nature of their, of their employment. Okay, so by design, they are in distance, they are distance learning programs in part-time mode. Students are expected to complete in at least two years time. And the most of our, of our students, they typically complete in about two and a half, uh, two and a half years. Um, the, the design of distance learning program is uh, uh, quite different from on-campus uh, program. It's intended to be a bit more flexible, especially in order to meet uh, the different uh, uh, needs of the distance learning uh, student because of work and family. So instead of having two total terms uh, plus the time for exam and dissertation, we have uh, four study sessions per year. And so students, they just take uh, one module for every study session. So they, they're never really overburdened by taking more than one module at the same time. Okay, these are just uh, Zoe, a few main features uh, concerning uh, the design of the MSc uh, distance learning programs generally. Concerning the public policy and management, uh, it, it does include uh, pretty much the same features of what we teach uh, on campus. Uh, so students can take uh, modules on public policy or public management or public financial management uh, or various combinations. So the program is quite flexible to, to let students adjust uh, which modules they're interested in, depending uh, on their background and their, their interest. And uh, thank you, Imog Imogen, for sharing the link in the chat. Please refer there for details. I'm very happy to receive questions by email uh, if, uh, if you have also later on. Okay. I take a few questions from uh, Maria and George. So from Maria, uh, you are reading uh, the entry requirements for the MSc International Business. It says uh, that it's open to graduates from any discipline. I'm about to graduate at the University of Bologna in the field of language and literature. Am I eligible to, to apply? So you, you are correct. Uh, as I said earlier, the MSc programs are quite uh, open to understand uh, applicants. They may come from a very diverse uh, background uh, in uh, subject areas and uh, uh, from uh, countries, regions uh, in, uh, in the world. The basic idea is uh, if the application uh, is uh, from a strong student, uh, so it means uh, good marks in, uh, in, uh, in their degree. So the good marks are quite a, a good signal of, of the skills uh, of the student uh, and therefore to make, uh, uh, to make us inclined to believe uh, the student uh, can quickly pick uh, the specificity of a relatively new area of study. And so therefore good marks uh, are in any case a good signal from whatever disciplinary background you have. My personal advice, uh, however, is to write uh, a very good personal statement which helps uh, uh, to we truly understand how is it that can be a shift from language and literature to international business. And so you may explain how is it, and I believe it can be well grounded, how is it a knowledge on generally communication you may have developed out of your first degree could be expanded towards a communication specifically in the context of international business. 
okay, to help uh, appraise uh, and understand how is it that this makes sense for your career to move from language and literature to an MSc in international business. So, George, thanks for the question. How will the school help foreign students adapt to their new environment where they begin the study study at SOAS? So, there, there is quite a lot of adjustment, as you may expect, George, uh, in order to, to, to pick the little bit of a tacit knowledge which goes uh, when uh, we find ourselves in a new cultural environment, in a, or generally just in a different environment, like a new, a new university. And uh, um, on-campus activity does help quite a lot, we realized over the last couple of years, because socialization in the academic climate environment is quite, uh, is quite important. So, uh, starting from lectures and then talking to other to the peer peer students uh, having meetings uh, one one to one with uh, uh, the teachers uh, with your appointed uh, academic advisor you will have uh, that can be quite uh, quite helpful to to help the students uh, get on board uh, with uh, the way in which uh, things are done there is within source uh, support from a uh, students uh, well-being service so occasionally students they may even struggle with practicalities like uh, how to settle to, to find an accommodation or possibly sometimes to move from one ac one, an accommodation to another one if the first one was a bit uh, provisional and uh, they, they may find uh, at source also some uh, administrative resources to consult uh, the students and to provide advice uh, about how to navigate uh, in an environment like London generally not just at SOAS. Okay, so, so we are pretty much aware of the state of, uh, you know, coming to London. Uh, some of, many of us uh, come from similar experience. I mean, originally I'm from Italy and I found myself uh, when I was 24 to start uh, an MSc at the London School of Economics, uh, just the very early experience to be abroad and to find, you know, to cope with accommodation, paying fees uh, and the transport and so on and so on. So we can, uh, we, we, we share, we've been on the same boat in the past, uh, some of us at least. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so a question again, thank you from Shubanka. Is a three-year-long bachelor course with a good score enough to substitute a four-year-long bachelor to be able to apply for the MSc at SOAS? I'd say really, it depends where this bachelor was uh, was taken. So I'm, uh, I, I can't remember all the various uh, uh, criteria for equivalence uh, in between a bachelor's degree which has been taken in any country in the world uh, with the UK bachelor degree. Just uh, generally what I can say is that a number of countries a uh, uh, three-year undergrad degree is equivalent uh, to the bachelor's degree in the UK but I remember there are some countries instead where a three-year bachelor degree is not quite equivalent to the three-year bachelor degree in the UK. And so, uh, therefore, um, if the application is weak, this may be rejected or the applicant may be offered to, to take uh, other courses before being qualified to, to apply for, uh, for, the, for the MSc. Uh, but I can't say anything more detailed than this, really. I would uh, invite you to, to contact admission office uh, to present uh, your case and to explore whether the bachelor you had, uh, you had attained uh, is equivalent uh, to the UK uh, bachelor one, or if it is not uh, what you need to do in order to fully qualify for, um, uh, for application to the MSc. So I pause for a few for a few seconds uh, just to wait and see if there are if there are any questions. Good. Uh, well, I hope uh, I hope that's fine. Uh, just to, to to try and share a bit more of uh, what we do. Really, as I said earlier. Now in the very mid, now I am in the very middle of teaching in the first uh, in the first term, and so I have all the students uh, uh, quite busy with uh, doing readings uh, on uh, various topics uh, from uh, how is it public policies uh, are made uh, in government. Uh, so what are the tools uh, for uh, green financing uh, in order to help the governments cope uh, with uh, an energy energy and technological uh, transition. We have discussed the issues uh, recently concerning uh, increased public debt 
in a, in a many governments uh, and how they can cope with it. Or we may have discussed the role of foreign aid for, for a number, number of countries and how possibly because of the effect of the COVID-19 some countries could be less generous than, uh, than in the past in extending uh, uh, foreign, uh, foreign aid. We have discussed recently issues concerning uh, digital government uh, and, and governance. So just uh, to share with you a number of uh, you know, quite lively, relevant issues in nowadays uh, societies and, uh, and economies, uh, which are part of what we teach and, and discuss. Of course, we are a university, we share with students a lot of theories and methods. So theories concerning explaining how finance management, government work and the methods about how to analyze what they do. But on the other hand, we are pretty much aware of the importance of practical skills. And so we also help our students to develop skills like how to carry out an interview, how to uh, organize, uh, administer a focus group, uh, how to write uh, concisely, uh, persuasively, if they wanted to make a claim, a point uh, about uh, a new policy to be, to be adopted, uh, and, uh, and so on and so on. So there are also a number of uh, practical, transferable, as it is told, the transfer transferable skills uh, that we try our students to develop uh, over the course of these, uh, of these programs. Okay, well, I had to feel to stop here from my side uh, and no other idea comes to my mind about what can be really interesting or relevant to share with you, but we have a few minutes left. So if you have any questions, just uh, please feel free to, uh, to share there in, in the chat. Well, okay, so I believe uh, not really anything to add from my side. Uh, what do you think, uh, I'm again, shall we bring the session to, to the end? Yeah, sure. Okay, well, but finally, first, uh, I'd like to thank you very much, uh, uh, all of you for your participation, for your attention and for your questions. Uh, please feel free to, to, to get in touch with uh, me, especially if you're interested in the MSC Public Policy Finance and Management, or uh, my colleagues, especially those uh, who are uh, conveners of the MSC uh, programs of your, of your interest. So Dr. Toluola Lawal, concerning the MSc Accounting and Finance, uh, Professor Victor uh, Murinda, he's also uh, the chair of the Center for Global Finance uh, attached uh, to the department, uh, to the School of Finance and Management, uh, Dr. Uh, Juan Zhu, uh, depending uh, on the MSc uh, program of your, of your interest. Uh, for sure, we'll be, we will be very happy to hear from you and then to pass any advice uh, concerning uh, your application or to explain more about uh, how the MSc programs are structured uh, and, and work. So thank you, thank you very much, uh, and uh, uh, hope to hear uh, from you or to meet you at SOAS at some time.